Uh, welcome, folks, to another Budget Jam or Budget Bust. Uh, today, I have for you a, another Soundstream amplifier. Um, and I think this is my second five channel I've ever tested on this channel. Um, my second ever amp dyno was a MB Quart five channel that failed horribly. So we're giving it another shot and trying to see if we could find a good five channel to recommend for you folks at home. Um, this one comes, uh, well, this one I didn't buy for once. Uh, this one came for me from Steven in Chicago. Uh, he's the one that provided that Autotech amplifier if you have been a fan of the channel for a while. Uh, he also gave me this one at the same time to test. It's been a long time. I got to get the amp back to him. Um, so we finally got it here, ready to go. Uh, but these you can find for typically about $215 to $220 almost everywhere. Um, you can check the link below for Amazon.com who sells these. So they're fairly affordable for what they say you get for an amplifier. Uh, because if this holds true, this would be one of the stronger five channels that you can find on the market. Most five channels only say they're two ohm stable on the sub channel. This one is rated to go down to one ohm. Um, and it provides a decent amount of power for both the high channels and the sub channel according to the ratings. But this is why we test these amps because we're gonna strap this up to the amp dyno. We're gonna find out is what's on the box legit for when you buy one of these. Um, ratings on this. Uh, this is, uh, I'll get to it in a bit here, but it's rated about 75, by watt, 75 watts by 4 at 4 ohms and all the way down to 750 watts of the sub channel down to 1 ohm. So let's check this out. Let's unbox this bad boy and let's see what you get for all $215. Okay, opening the box up. First thing we get on top, we get the owner's manual, and it looks like some spare parts. And let's see, this looks like it's a owner's manual for the entire Tarantula Electro series. So let's just go right to the specs on this amp. And we'll say these Electros do give at least a thorough manual. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to read that or not, but this amp, like I mentioned earlier, is rated at uh, 4 channels at, at 4 ohms, 4 channels by 75 watts, and 325 watts on the sub-channel at 2 ohms, uh, 4 channels at 125 watts, and 500 watts at 2 ohms on the sub, and 1 ohm, the sub is rated to do... Uh, 750 watts and bridged of course it is 2 by 250 on the main channels so we'll find out if that really does it or not um, get our spare fuse some screws allen keys yeah all exciting stuff and ooh, you know just like the other electro series one I did uh, this is the base knob it is metal on there so it's not an El Cheapo like you get with some of the other Epsilon uh, remote base knobs there's no indicator light on here though um, it does have a telephone cord style connector and lastly da -da -da, we have a fairly large size amplifier yeah, of course these do have the LEDs, just like the other Electro one. Uh, so there's a button you're going to be able to switch around the colors uh, along one side of here. So, I mean, if you want an example of what these look like lit up, um, you can check out my Soundstream T1 4000 DL video, and I do light it up in there. Um, of course, their button is somewhere on here. I think there's a button somewhere here. Yeah, there's the LED mode button right there so uh, nice looking amplifier it's got a brushed aluminum look to it and of course the tarantula logo right there ooh purdy um, so let's start by uh, checking out the sides of the amp 
Okay, along this side of the amplifier, we find our power and ground input terminals, as well as all of our speaker output terminals. Um, you, of course, have your power and ground right here. And these in the specs are rated at, at a four gauge. However, this is a four gauge reducer. It does not fit in. So you might be able to get some four gauge wiring, um, as long as it's not over, uh, oversized four gauge. You might be able to squeeze it in there, um, but you're not gonna be able to use a true four gauge reducer. You might need to use a four gauge to eight gauge reducer, uh, like what I'm gonna do to squeeze the wire into these terminals. Um, these speaker output terminals you see here, over here, these are for all the main high channels. Um, they are supposed to be eight gauge, so I think they're probably more like an in between eight to 10. They're a little tight on eight gauge wiring. And of course you can bridge these here. This channels uh, four, three, two, and one. And over here are your outputs for your mono uh, sub channel. And of course it does come with one onboard fuse and that is a hundred amp maxi fuse. And for those of you that always, always type in the comments, just because the amp comes with a hundred amp onboard fuse, does not mean that the amp can only theoretically draw 100 amps, okay? A 100 amp fuse does not pop immediately at 100 amps. So I don't need to see all of you in the comments who don't understand <laughs> how fuses work going, how in the world did this amp uh, draw more than 100 amps and not pop the fuse, okay? These fuses can take more than 100 amps on a burst, so. All right. Along this side of the amplifier, we have our RCA inputs, as well as all the settings for this amplifier. And there are a lot of settings that you can do with this amp. All right, um, for starters, the RCA inputs, you can't really see it too well here on this camera, uh, but these are a higher quality uh, Tiffany style RCA. Um, they are a decent quality. They are gold plated. <laughs> um, so maybe it's bronze uh, you know they look gold plated here but they are the tiffany style which is pretty nice um you do of course have uh for all three of the rca inputs you know uh channels one and two three and four and uh, uh five and six which is technically your subwoofer mono channels um, but you don't need to use all of them to run this amplifier this is the really really nice thing that i like about these uh, you can see over here we have a mode setting, which could be, do we want two-channel mode, four-channel mode, or five-channel mode? So, technically, you could run this amp with just one set of RCAs coming to the amplifier. In fact, that's how I'm going to run it. So I'm just going to run it in two-channel mode and let the onboard system kind of uh, distribute all the power to where it needs to go. Um, but you don't have to run it that way, but if you're running a budget head unit that only has two RCA uh, outputs, this can be a really handy feature, especially um, when you're wanting to run a five channel. You know, some five channels don't give you this option and you have to run um, five channels worth of RCAs to them. Um, over here, you have your crossover. You can see there, uh, you can run it um, uh, full or you can run high pass. Uh, here on the uh, main channel So channels one and two you can only run in full range or at high pass filter mode uh, Channel three and four now of course you have your adjustable. Sorry uh, your high pass filter is adjustable from 50 Hertz to 4 kilohertz Of course your gain is adjustable from 6 volts to 0.2 volts channels three and four however um, give you the option of doing um, full range high pass filter or band pass now what that means is over here, you can run a high pass filter from 50 Hertz to 150 Hertz. We can run a low pass filter from four kilohertz down to 250 Hertz. All right, so, and you could also band pass as well. Um, and then you could go, okay, I only run and want to run um, mid bass. So if you're running like an active system and you want to run mids, um, you can do that over here. So technically you could run your tweeters here, you could run your mid-bass or mid-range from here. You could say I want to be 150 
but I want to cut, cut it off at four kilohertz. So it's not really meant for subwoofers, but it could be for kind of a, you know, an active type system. Um, and of course down here you have your sub channel. Um, it's probably a little bit weak. You have your low pass filter from 150 hertz to 30 hertz. There's no subsonic filter. Of course you do have a bass boost from zero to 12 dBs. And of course its own individual gain as well. Now, for those of you at home setting up a five channel amp and you've never done it before, you have to remember, you have to adjust the gain on each channels that you're running. All right, so you can't, you don't just set one set of gains like you do on a mono amp uh, or a two channel amp. You have to set it for the fronts, the rears, and the subwoofer. Um, so even though I have it in two channel mode, I have to do that all the way along um, to get this amp set up properly. Okay, opening her up and pretty nice looking inside here on this amp um i, I mean i gotta say the tarantula series i really don't have a problem with how the guts look in them i mean they look like they can do what they say they can do um you have over on, over here this is very distinctly the class a b highs section uh, you could see here channel one two three and four over here is your class d mono side uh, of course, you have the uh, output filter caps over here, uh, your Class D chip, etc. Um, these main caps are 105 degree, 63 volt, 3300 microfarad uh, main caps here. Um, these are on the output side, of course, 63 volt, 105 degree, 1000 microfarad uh, caps on the output side. So. I would say the board looks like it can do the ratings. We're going to find out if the amp can do the ratings. All right, nothing left to do here but to strap up the T52500DL to our trusty amp dyno and find out just how much power this amp produces. Uh, for a reminder for those of you when you see me watch multi-channel amps, here's how this one's going to go. We are going to bridge the main channels. So we're gonna bridge them and you're gonna see eight ohms bridge which simulates four channels by at four ohms. Instead of, you're gonna see bridged at eight ohms. Then you're gonna see bridged at four ohms which is the same as the bridging of the four ohms rating on here as well as a stereo mode four channels at two ohms. Um, while we're doing that, I am not gonna put a full stress load on the sub channel. I am gonna wire it up to four ohms. Okay, so all channels are going to be loaded, and then I'm going to leave all the main channels loaded at 4 ohms for the highest pass possible load, and then we're going to test the sub-channel from 4 ohms down to 1 ohm. So, a lot, a lot of wattage numbers coming at you right now.
Okay, final thoughts here on the Soundstream T5 2500DL. Um, so, I gotta admit, when the testing first started on the high channels, I did not have a lot of hope for this. I was like, ugh, you know, I didn't really stress the amp, and it's not quite meeting its rating, so what is it gonna mean on the sub channel? Because usually I find the sub channels on five channel amps are the weak point. So, I was very surprised when we went to the sub channel. And the sub channel did even better than I had hoped um, before I even started the testing. So, I gotta look at it this way. Uh, I am gonna rate this amp a budget gem. Um, why? You know, cause like, well, you know, it missed a couple of the ratings, so I mean, well, why are you rating a budget gem? Well, think of it this way, all right? If you don't stress the amplifier to its limit, which is not what 99.9% .9 of you out there are going to do, and you just say, okay, I'm going to run it like a normal human being, which is going to be, I'm going to set up all four channels of the highs. I'm going to go four ohms per channel, which is like the average. Every person is doing it. Um, and I'm going to cross it over at 80 hertz and above for the high channels, 80 hertz and below for the sub channel. Guess what? It's going to do its ratings that are on the box. Because if the power supply isn't stretched to its max, this is going to do it. I mean, I had this thing stressed as hard as possible. Four ohms bridged on the high channels and one ohm on the sub channel. And I got over 816 watts uncertified. Granted, it was like 666 certified and over a thousand watts dynamic on a $200 amplifier, 216 bucks. I mean, think about it that way, you know, for about a hundred dollars, you know, I think it's fair to say you could get, you know, a hundred, hundred twenty dollars, a decent, or I shouldn't say decent, but a budget 600 to a thousand watt amp for about a hundred dollars. You can probably get a 75 to 80 watt by four, four channel amp this gives you all that in one fairly compact pa uh, package that is very easy on the settings for the normal person to set up so we have a budget gem so for this series the tarantula series or the tarantula electro whatever soundstream's calling it um, they did a nice job I don't know about the longevity of these but is what on the box what you get yeah for the most part you do so uh, nice job soundstream you don't hear that often um, so yeah folks if you run one of these or if you're looking for a five channel it's gonna serve you right so that's it for me folks I got a ton of amps that I still gotta test so I will see you next time